Hello, my name is Miss D and I'm going to walk you through how to do project number one. This is for week number one. You're going to go ahead and open up your ceramic kit and get out your tools and texture bag. In this bag, you will see a canvas. Now I have my canvas on a board. You can easily put your canvas right on your table. You will also need your toothbrush, the small plastic cup. Now I put just a little bit of water in my cup. You will need your plastic dowel rod. You will need your small wood dowel, a toothpick, and in your bag you have a bunch of things that could make texture. I want you to go ahead and look in there and pick out the one that you like the most. Now if you like a couple of them, you can use multiple. I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and get these things off of my table and get started. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab the plastic bag that says number one on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff out. This is the clay that I'm gonna use for this project. We're going to be making a monogram door hanging. This is what it looks like. Now you're going to go ahead and put your own initial on it. My name starts with an E, so I think I might make an E. I'm going to take my piece of clay. Now this is really thick. I want my clay to be as thick as a cookie, like a really good chocolate chip cookie. So I'm going to take my clay and I'm going to squeeze and turn. Squeeze and turn. As I do that over and over, it will make my piece bigger. Can you see already that it's bigger than it was? Squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn. Now you can also go ahead and set it on your table and you can hit it. You can press it. You can also take this plastic roller and you can roll it out. Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and work with this. See, it's not too thin, but it's a perfect thickness. Now I'm gonna pick um, some different textures that I like. The first one that I'm gonna pick is this one. This is on the back of your sponge and it looks really cool, it's like brick. I'm gonna set it down, and I'm gonna press it hard into my clay. When I feel like I have it pressed in, I'm going to pick it up. You can see that it's created a really nice texture. Now I'm gonna put texture over here. I really like this one, I think it's very pretty. I'm gonna set it on my clay, I'm not gonna put it over here because I wanna keep that brick texture over here. I'm gonna take my roller and I'm gonna roll it and press it into my clay. You're going to roll gently, but you also wanna make sure you're getting it into the clay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to peel it off. Doesn't that look cool? Now you can see I have a big oval or an egg shape. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it into a different shape that I like. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and grab my toothpick. It has that nice sharp point. That's what I'm going to use to cut. Now, this is an oval. I kind of want mine to be um, pretty natural. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it. To whatever shape I want. Take these pieces, crunch them together, and set them aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my water, dip a little bit of my finger into the water, and I'm going to go around my edges. I want to smooth all of my edges out so that I don't have these little pieces of clay everywhere. You want a nice, smooth, round edge.
Now I'm going to take my water, set it aside, and take this little bit of clay that I had. If it's too dry, you can always take a little bit of that water and put it on and smash it again. I'm going to take a piece of this and break it off. I'm going to set my piece onto the side just to protect it. And I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to make what I call a coil. Okay, now you can take your hand and you can move it. You want to roll it from here all the way to your wrist. So all the way down and back up. All the way down and back up. Now I'm going to take my coil and I'm going to shape it in the shape that I want. Now my name starts with an E, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make an E. Now I need to attach the E onto my piece. Okay? In order to do this, we have to do this thing called slip and score. For that, I'm going to grab my toothbrush and my water. I'm going to take my um, letter and flip it upside down. I'm going to take the toothbrush, put it in a little bit of the water, and I'm going to scratch the surface. Slip and score means that I'm going to take and scratch or score the back of my letter and I'm gonna do it on this piece as well. You can kind of guess where your piece is going to be. When I do this slip and score, it almost creates a glue, okay? Wet clay is going to be like a glue. You're gonna set it on your piece and press it on. Press it nice and good. Now if you wanna be extra fun, I'm going to take another piece of texture, okay, this is cool, and I'm going to press it onto just the E, because I want that E to have a cool texture too. So here is my piece with my E and my texture behind it. Now I want to be able to hang this, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my wood dowel and I'm going to decide where I want to hang my piece. I think I want a hole here and a hole here. So I'm going to set it down, move my water aside, and I'm going to go ahead and push the dowel until I hit the table and then push the dowel until I hit the table. Now you can look on the back just to make sure that you got it all the way through. Now I have my wall hanging. You want to let this dry for two days. One, two, two days. Once it's dry for two days, then you can take the paint that's in your kit and you can paint it. But you have to wait two days. And here is the project finished. You can see I painted the front. I used yellow and orange and then I used green for my letter. I didn't worry about painting the back because it's gonna hang on a door. Then in your kit, you have different kinds of cord. You have one that's elastic, then you have some others. I think you have this green one, okay? And then you have lots of beads. I didn't use all of mine. I might save mine for another project, um, but you can use as many as you want to and create your hanger. On the back, you can see, I went ahead and strung it through the holes that we created and I tied it in a knot about four different times so that knot is nice and thick. That way when I push through, it's not gonna come out. Then I can hang it like this. I hope you enjoyed this project and I can't wait to see you next Friday for the next project. Bye.